Jazz scales. There are so many of them. How are we going to figure them out? How are we going to figure out what scales work over what chord type or what scales we can play over portions of chords in a chord progression uh, to harmonically follow the changes in a jazz tune? Well, jazz scales are obviously just scales, but we think of them as jazz scales because uh, we have to know them so well, so inside and out. We have to drill them so well because keys are changing throughout a one chord progression throughout a tune, and we need to know exactly where we are and be able to uh, work on those. In this video, I'm going to break down for you. This is the ultimate guide for what scale you can use over what chord type. I'm gonna go through all the chord types and all their variations with extensions and various options and give you a go-to answer that I think sounds the best for and when to know how to figure out what scale works over what chord type and grouping chords together in progressions. It's gonna be very valuable and it's valuable for anybody. You don't have to play guitar. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills for guitarists so we can express ourselves more freely and improvise and arrange on the guitar. But this is valuable for any musician because we all need to figure this out. I'm gonna go through a bunch of tunes and give little examples along the way. So uh, without further ado, let's jump in and do this. We have a lot to cover. So we're gonna go over major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished, minor six, diminished seven, minor major seven, and major seven, sharp five. I have my little outline in front of me here. We're gonna go over all of those and their variations, what happens when you add flat nine or flat 13 or make it sus uh, to various chords because we need to know all of that because these, these are the chords that are coming up in chord progressions and lots of examples along the way. If you're a guitarist and you want the visual scale shapes, scale forms that include everything we're talking about in this video and everything you need for playing over any chord, you can get my free PDF that has all the diagrams called my Printable Parent Scales PDF. There's a link for it in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Those are the scale shapes that I play with and that I'll be demonstrating with in this lesson. Let's jump into the first chord type and what scales we can play over them. All right, we're starting with major seven and major six. These are interchangeable. If you see major seven or major six, you can play or think of them as either one. This is just a major chord with an extra note of some kind, a six or a seven. And this includes for if you see major nine or major 13, all of those are interchangeable. Your default scale that you're gonna play, you guessed it, it's the major scale. So we're, we wanna get used to this and I'll talk about when you don't play the major scale over a major chord for, in a second, but let's give little examples of everything here. I have the tune All of Me pulled up and I'll demonstrate on a different tune for each chord type and each scale that we're talking about. Well, the first chord is C major, so let's press play on this backing track here and play C major. I'll stick to mostly the scale, but sometimes add in some chromatic notes, but just want to demonstrate on each one so we can hear the sound. This will be more useful as we get into weirder and uh, different chord types. Now, if you have a major seven chord, major six chord, major type of chord, there are instances where we want to play the Lydian scale instead. You don't need to think of Lydian scale, but we can think of it any way we want so long as we're playing the right scale. Lydian scale is the fourth mode of the major scale. And if you wanna just think of it as its own scale, it's just like a major scale, but it has a sharp four. So I go one, two, three, sharp four, five. Ba, 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 sharp four, three, two, one. Instead of one, two, three, five. Okay, so Lydian scale. Now, the way to think of this, if you just wanna think of your parent scales, as I refer to them, is that it's the fourth scale of a major key, so you would just call it four, four, three, two, one, say ah. Lydian, C Lydian is just the same thing as the G major scale, okay? So there are instances where you want to do this, uh, and one of those is if the major seven chord or major six chord or major nine or major 13 that you see is clearly the fourth chord in the key, okay? So here's the tune Meditation by Jobim and it's clearly in C major. The key of the song is in C major. Okay, well here in the bridge, it goes to F major. Ah, F major seven. Now you could play a major F major scale over that, but this is going intentionally to the fourth chord of the key. 
So what you'll learn here as we go through this tutorial is that knowing these relationships and these numbers, what the one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord is, what the qualities of those are, be able to think of those relationships on the fretboard eventually will be very beneficial. So when this F major comes up in this tune, we're still playing the C major scale. And by playing the C major scale over F major, that's the same thing as Lydian. You don't need to think of it as Lydian. You don't need to think of it as a mode. You don't need to think of it as has a sharp four. You can just think of it as C major still, and you can think of it in any of those ways, doesn't matter. So. So it has this note in it. That's the interesting one. Okay, so if the major chord is the fourth in the key, the fourth chord of a key, then you're playing uh, Lydian, you're playing the still just the parent key. Okay, you also play Lydian if it is the flat six major chord in a minor key. Okay, this is gonna take some explanation. Let's go to the tune uh, How Insensitive, okay? And we're looking at B flat major seven. Okay, so instead of being like, ah, oh, B flat major seven, okay, I'm gonna switch to the B flat major scale. You could, you definitely could. This is also why I like playing with chord tones because I kind of think chord tones first and then any notes around the chord tones can work. I have a whole playlist about playing over any chord type chord tones and then adding notes around it. I'll put a link to that playlist in the description. But let's look at this, this is D minor, the key. And when we go, when we get to this chord, we're still in D minor. This is a chord that is in the key of D minor. So we have D minor is a chord and C major dominant seven is in that key and B flat major seven is the six, we'll call it the flat six major seven chord, flat six major seven chord. So it doesn't matter how you think of it, the parent scale is D minor, just D natural minor over this, which is the same thing as B flat Lydian play D natural minor over this. Okay. Anything goes as far as how you want to approach things, but you don't even have to think of the chord if you're in the right scale and key at the, at the right time. That's what I did a two part lesson series on recently. And there's a link to that in the description for how to drill that stuff uh, from the ground up and actually work on the key changes. But as long as you're in the right key at the right time, you can go by ear, play around with it. Okay, so that is another instance of Lydian. And just be aware of the parent key that you're in at any time. Okay, the last uh, version of a major seven or major six or major type chord is if we explicitly see a sharp 11. So Bright Size Life by Pat Metheny, uh, the second chord here, we have B flat major seven sharp 11. It says over A, but that's fine. That's part of the chord anyway. Don't worry about that. That's the bass note. But B flat major seven sharp 11, okay? That's just explicit. Doesn't matter the context, the key you're in, anything. That is explicitly asking for the Lydian sound, sharp 11 in there. So let's hear how that sounds over this. <laughs> Remember, the Lydian is F major, the key, because if you call it four, four, five, six, seven, one, oh, there's F, or four, three, two, one, oh, it's the fourth mode, okay? So it's the same thing as the key of F major, or the scale of D, uh, D uh, natural minor, let's hear it again. Just thinking of F major. What's cool about Lydian is every single note is a chord tone. There are no notes that are bad to sit on. You can hang out on every note and they're all consonant, good sounding notes. Okay, so for review for major chords, major scale by default. And then Lydian, if it's the four chord of a major key, you can just think of the parent scale. The flat six major chord of a minor key, just think of the parent scale, that's the minor key. Or if it explicitly says sharp 11, then it wants you to play a major scale with a sharp four. 
Sharp 11 and Sharp 4 are the same thing. I know this is a lot to take in, but all the information is here for you. I'm just making this video as a big resource. You can watch it again. You could take notes and listen again to the examples one by one. You can come back to this video and find the right chord type that you're looking for in a tune years later. That's why I'm making this. I know it's a lot of information. You're not expected to memorize it as we go, but just giving you what you need. Let's move on to the next chord type. Okay, the next chord type is dominant seven. So we just start with a basic dominant seven. Now this applies if it says dominant seven or let's say D7, because that's the example we're gonna use. D7 or D9 or D13, or even if it's D7 sus, okay? All of those are just gonna be, the default scale we're gonna use is, the mode version is called Mixolydian, but really it's the treating the chord as the fifth chord of the key. It's really a giveaway when you see dominant seven. We're gonna look at this tune Olio. D7 means that, oh, that's definitely the fifth chord of the key. So you can find that however you want, but if you call D5, five, and then play a scale, five, four, three, two, one, ah, the scale is G major. Or five, six, seven, one, oh, that note is G, so G major, the scale, is where that chord comes from. Okay, so G major is the parent scale. Let's hear how that scale sounds over D7. playing around with it a little bit, but mostly was playing just the G major scale, or if you think of the D as the root, then you're thinking of it as D mixolydian, same thing, okay? Default for D7, D9, D13, D sus4, that's all mixolydian. Now, things get weird uh, with a lot of dominant seven variations. Um, if the dominant seven has a flat nine or a flat 13, or certainly of course both, but if it says flat nine or flat 13 or both, you want to, uh, think of it as resolving to a minor key instead of a major key, which changes the scale. Okay, so let's go to Stella by Starlight here and look at this right here. G7 flat 13, or if it said G7 flat 9, or G7 flat 9 flat 13, this indicates the mode, I'm telling you all the mode names, but you don't have to worry about them. This would be the mode Phrygian dominant, okay? It's a dominant seventh chord, so it's still the fifth chord of a key, this is G, five, six, seven, one. Okay, it's the five of C, but it's the five of C minor. So the scale is actually C harmonic minor. Okay, so flat nine or flat 13, dominant seventh chord is pointing to a minor key that is a harmonic minor scale while that's being played. So if you play C harmonic minor over this chord, it's gonna sound right. And if you think of G as the root, that's when we're thinking of it as a mode. If you just think of the parent scale, that's fine too. Here's C harmonic minor over this. Pretty cool sounding, right? Okay, C harmonic minor, G7, the five of the key it's pointing to, but harmonic minor scale, okay? Now, this includes if it says sus even. So if it said flat nine sus, uh, like dominant seven, flat nine sus, it's still doing the same thing. So let's do another example of it where we look at this D seven flat nine sus, which means it's the suspended fourth in the chord. So D seven, okay, but it has a flat nine and it's also suspended. It's a very cool chord, but it just means the same thing. D is five, where's one, and one, five, four, three, two, one. Notice when I count, I usually use the major scale just because you can count with the major scale in time. Five, four, three, two, one, uh, or five, four, three, two, one. Anyway, D7 is the five of G. So G harmonic minor is the scale that we want to play over this. Let's hear how it sounds. right? Doesn't matter that the sus is in there, same thing, okay? So the trickiest part is, of course, doing all this, this math kind of, to find, oh, what is, what's the parent scale? Where is it coming from? Whatever. And then you have the work to practice and everything like that. But still, kind of giving you a list here of everything that works. Uh, 
Moving on to other types of dominant seventh chords. If the dominant seventh chord says sharp 11, like G7, sharp 11 in the tune, Girl from Ipanema, for example. Okay, now we need to play just what we would have played with the Mixolydian or the regular one, but we need to sharp the four of the scale. Okay, so this is the fourth mode. This could be called Lydian dominant. The scale we play here is the fourth mode of melodic minor. Okay. Whenever I say that kind of thing, just say, okay, call G4 and then count and find one. Four, five, six, seven, one, ah. Okay, D. D melodic minor. Okay. Over time, you'll get better at this. G7, sharp 11, is the fourth chord in melodic minor. So D melodic minor. Let's see how it sounds playing D melodic minor over that. melodic minor over the G7 sharp 11 that shifts anywhere okay on the guitar I'm usually thinking in just physical space so if I'm in seeing C dominant 7 sharp 11 then I'm thinking ah melodic minor off of this note whatever it is which happens to be G right or of course you can think in the mode as well and that's fine a uh, whole tone scale is something that we're going to use over dominant seventh chords as a default if and there are other options on this, but this is my default, if it's just dominant seven sharp five. So we move on to this tune here and see uh, this Wayne Shorter tune, Do B seven sharp five, I'm just gonna play B whole tone scale. That's my go-to for this. So we'll hear how it sounds. Just up and down, kind of cool. I love the whole tone scale. I have a video all about the whole tone scale. I'll put a link to that in the description. And actually I have a scale series about every scale type and mapping it out all over the guitar. So I'll put a link to that entire series in the description if you wanna go click on it and look for any scale type. Diminished scale, there's a lesson for it. Whole tone scale, there's a lesson for it. All of these. Um, one more in the dominant seven camp and that is the altered scale. If you see flat five, sharp nine or any combination of messed up fives and nines sharp five flat nine flat five sharp nine you know any mixed up not natural nine not natural five and they're mixed up together uh then altered scale is the scale that we use of course in my scale series there's a video on the altered scale and uh, this is a really cool scale if you know melodic minor and of course in my scale series there's a melodic minor lesson uh then you can just think ah it's the seventh mode of melodic minor so let's go to this tune pat metheny tune F7 sharp nine, it could be any number, it could say alt, it could say flat five sharp nine. Um, think up a half, this is how most people do it. Think up a half step from F and then play the melodic minor scale off of that. And you have the altered scale, that's it. So I'm gonna be basically playing G flat melodic minor over this chord. <laughs> Cool, mysterious scale, really good one to have um, under our belt for when chords are altered. Okay, so those are all the dominant seven ones. Any type of dominant seven chord that comes up, you should be able to uh, figure out the scale that you need for that. Um, and again, most of the time, depending on the type of music we're playing, we're gonna go with these pretty standard, uh, the, the top example, right? Mixolydian by default or Phrygian dominant if it's leading to a minor key. Let's move on to the next chord type. The next chord type is minor seven. Okay, so this is minor seven, or if you see minor nine or minor 11, all kind of interpretations of the same thing. The uh, couple defaults here, we wanna play the natural minor scale, which is the sixth mode of the major scale, if you wanna think of it that way, but just the natural minor scale. And we wanna play that uh, if the minor chord that we see, minor seven, minor nine, minor 11, if it is the tonic, would be the word, the tonic chord of the key. Okay, so let's move on through our playlist here in iRail Pro, which is what I'm using for the uh, chord diagrams or the chord symbols. Summertime, uh, the George Gershwin tune. A minor seven is the first chord. 
Um, and that is an indicator in any tune, the first chord being minor seven, okay, not always, but if it's the chord that is we're coming back to, we're resolving to, we're ending on, that kind of thing, this is the tonic chord, it's the main chord. We wanna play the uh, natural minor scale, which is also called the Aeolian mode uh, minor scale. So I'm just gonna play over here. It's different than one of our other main minor choices, which I'll show you next, in this note. That note. Okay, so I was kind of playing around with, you could play pentatonic and then this note here, which is the flat six of the scale. That's what makes it natural minor. So uh, that's a go-to if your minor chord is the tonic. Okay, now, if your minor chord is the six of a major key, and it's not the tonic, or, um, yeah, if it's the six of a major key, then also we wanna play natural minor. So I'll give more examples, I have examples queued up for all these. Okay, so E flat, C minor. Okay, C minor, what is that? Da, da, da. Often, here's what we wanna always be doing. Look around every chord to see if it's grouped together in a key. This is the one chord in E flat, then the six chord in E flat, then the two chord in E flat, then the five chord. All of that's from the E flat scale, okay? So C minor here in this case is the sixth chord of the key. Here's E flat, seven, six, ah, that note is C, okay? So do you need to think of the C minor natural scale as that flies through for two beats? No, you just think in this approach when we're thinking of playing over with scales and parent scales, I do think of the individual chords when I'm thinking of chord tones, but in this case, oh, yes, that chord is natural minor and it's just baked into the overall scale. So we can just play E flat major for this. play around with the actual scale. So that's also where natural minor, if it's clearly the six of the key, natural minor, and just keep playing the parent scale. Okay, the next kind of default thing is Dorian. Okay, you might've heard of Dorian. If you've heard of modes at all, Dorian is one of the more talked about modes. Um, if a chord is a two in a chord progression, then it's Dorian. Okay, so I'll go to Tenor Madness and see here, we have C minor, to F7, if you see a minor seven chord and right after it is a dominant seventh chord and they're a fourth apart, you then it's the Dorian, Dorian scale. Okay, so if I just loop these two and think um, C Dorian, which is the same thing as B flat major scale, I'm golden. And this is the five of B flat. So these go together in the key of B flat. So B flat major for this whole thing. flat major for both of these. I'm starting to group things together. Mixolydian, Dorian, they're from the same scale. We can just think of this as two, think of this as five. Moving on, we also want to play Dorian if the chord is clearly the fourth chord in a minor key. Okay, fourth chord in a minor key. So let's move on through our different song examples. Ah, Blue Bossa. Okay, well we said if the first chord is clearly the tonic, you'd play C natural minor. Okay, well, this is the fourth chord in that key. F minor is naturally in C minor. And so we just want to keep playing C natural minor. And when we do that, it's Dorian, F Dorian. Again, think of it however you want. There's no right or wrong way. If you like the way it's coming out and sounding and sounding right, then you're good. So you can think of this as C minor or F Dorian.
some of that I was thinking of just C natural minor. And then I thought, then I reframed it in how I was hearing it, seeing it as F Dorian and nobody would know when I switched to one or the other. Uh, if I think of it as F Dorian, I'm just basically thinking of more uh, the root being F instead of a collection of notes that happens to just be C natural minor. Okay, so moving on with more minor. Uh, there's also a minor chord in a major key that is the third chord of a key. So right now we've talked about if it's the sixth chord of the key or the natural minor, if it's the two chord of the key or Dorian, uh, but what if it's the third chord of a key? Well, this is really um, kind of unnecessary to worry about because when it's the third chord of the key, it usually is just flying through a collection of chords that is just all in one key. So in this collection of chords on I Got Rhythm, D minor is the third chord of uh, the key of B flat. Okay, so you don't need to actually think, the mode would be called Phrygian, but you don't need to think that. This All of this can just be B flat. So if you see this D minor, the reason this is important to include in there is because I don't, you don't need to look at that and say, oh, okay, D minor, do I play D natural minor scale? Do I play D Dorian? No, you just keep playing B flat because it's the third chord of B flat. I'll just play up and down. Okay, so it's just in there. Right? So don't get hung up on all those minor chords. This is three, six, two, five, all in one key. Okay. So the other thing is if in doubt, and it's a minor chord and you can't figure it out from any of those other ways, if in doubt, Dorian, if in doubt, Dorian. Okay. So um, I'll just jump for fun to so what? Uh, this is famously supposed to be Dorian mode, though it's written as D minor 11, but really it's just a Dorian sound. But all of this, would be just playing Dorian. And it sounds great often, always. Okay, D Dorian, uh, just if in doubt, that's just an example for fun to show you, but you can just do Dorian anytime, and it's a pretty safe thing to do on any minor chord. That's it for minor, moving on to the next chord type. The next chord type is half diminished, or minor seven flat five, uh, in the way that these tunes are written out in this uh, software. They're using the circle with a line through it, which is very common, uh, half diminished, or minor seven flat five. Okay, there's one option I have for you here, because uh, if you see half diminished as a two of a minor two five one, or minor two five, which is this, this is two five one D G C minor two five one leading to C minor. Uh, that is where it is most commonly placed almost exclusively. If you see half diminished, like right here, half diminished, and then B seven minor two to five. Um, what you can play is the harmonic minor. We did this before, you would play the C harmonic minor in this case, the harmonic minor scale that it's pointing to. Well, this G7 flat nine would be exactly that already. The Phrygian dominant or the dominant seven leading to a minor key. Okay, you play the harmonic minor of that minor key. Well, you just play the harmonic minor of the minor key off of the half diminished as well because it it is in the scale. So N, the uh, collection of notes that is C harmonic minor, the second chord through that scale is D half diminished. I have a video actually that just quickly <laughs> outlines what are the chords through harmonic minor. I'll put that, I'll put a link to that in the description. The chords through harmonic minor. Well, the second chord is half diminished. So we're set. So if I play this and just play C harmonic minor during that, that was all harmonic minor. Harmonic minor, and that's nice, it's just grouped together. So that's the only example I have. Um, if in doubt, or if you see it in some other context, you can play it as the seventh mode of the major scale, or just play the major scale a half step up. 
But I couldn't even find any examples of that. I just flipped through all these jazz tunes in this in this app that I'm using. And uh, they're all part of minor 2-5-1s. You can just think of it as harmonic minor. If you don't like the sound of it, you can switch it to um, thinking of it as the seventh mode of major. But uh, there you go, minor 2-5-1s, just think of them as harmonic minor, leading to harmonic minor of the uh, minor key that it's going to every time. Okay, I know this stuff is hard to... It's hard to talk about, honestly. It's hard to explain and fly through all of these. But little by little, the way we actually learn, just keep this in mind, because you're probably watching this video like, oh man, I'll never get this. We will, if you take one example from one tune you're actually wanting to work on, you find that chord type in this video and you slowly work it out with your own hands, with your own ears and with, it will click, it will click, okay? That's how we actually learn, you have to apply it. You have to apply it. So that's it for half diminished. Let's move on to the next chord type. Just a few more, minor six or minor six nine. The scale that I like to use pretty much all the time on this kind of chord is melodic minor. Um, Dorian also works, but I just pretty much always use melodic minor. Let's go to example here, uh, G minor six down here. I'd play G melodic minor. <laughs> an odd sounding chord and scale but really fun once you get used to once you get used to playing around with it so minor six or minor six nine I'd, I'd go default melodic minor and you can use Dorian instead if you like the sound of it and you want to use that let's move on to the next chord type Okay, the next chord type is diminished seven. Your default would probably be the diminished scale. Check out my video on the diminished scale. It's one of my most popular videos on my channel. Super thorough video about the diminished scale. If you're interested in checking that out, let's go to the tune Corcovado and just play with the diminished scale on the A flat chord. <laughs> Just playing up and down the scale a little bit so we can hear it work over that. Uh, the other option with diminished chords that's very important to know about is that you can play the harmonic minor scale uh, of the key that the diminished chord is pointing to. Okay, so let's go to G sharp diminished seven to A minor. Oh, well, G sharp diminished seven is the seventh chord of the harmonic minor scale leading to A minor. Okay, so it's resolves and if I play this and play G or A harmonic minor the whole time it works really well So diminished doesn't always have to be diminished scale. It can be harmonic minor scale of the chord that it's just below, that it's just below. If you see diminished seven going right to a minor chord, uh, a half step up, then you can just play harmonic minor of that minor chord. You can also totally play diminished scale and that's fine as well. Just a couple more chord types. Let's move to the next one. The next chord type is minor major seven. Uh, I'm gonna go to Solar for this one. I did a really thorough um, example over Solar with my lesson series about playing scales uh, through changes. Check out those videos. I already referred to them earlier, but really great lessons on actually changing the scales while you're playing to work on what drills do you need to do to start to map out and play them while it changes instead of just one chord at a time like we're doing here. But here is um, C melodic minor. That's my go-to choice for minor major seven. You can also play harmonic minor over it as well. Just 
just kind of mixing around between the two, but melodic minor is my choice on that. Let's move to the last chord type. The last chord type is major seven sharp five. Pretty rare that you will come across this or need to work on it, but it could be in a tune. You could be using it for fun uh, for yourself. Uh, this is the third chord in melodic minor or harmonic minor. Okay, again, you can check out my video on chords through harmonic minor or chords through melodic minor. Those are both in the description. A lot of uh, reference videos here just in case you wanna go deeper on things. But D, major seven, sharp five, we're going to be thinking of B melodic minor. Okay, B melodic minor. playing around with it. Obviously it feels like it works. Very strange chord. How would you know what to do on that? We need to calculate as we go. Okay, that's the third chord of, think down a minor third and think, if you wanna think in the parent scales, think, ah, B melodic minor. Obviously a lot of melodic minor work to do here, harmonic minor work, if you know your parent scales, then of course it takes the kind of math of which parent scale do I use, but if you know the parent scales and you don't wanna think in modes, you can get around and go by ear and play really successfully that way. That's why I have my printable parent scales PDF, all the diagrams for the guitar, uh, every position of every scale type, uh, so you can work on all the physical forms and shapes that you need of any of these scales. Uh, the link for that is in the top of the description. It's totally free, you can get it there, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. If you have not watched my two-part series on playing scales through changes and what drills to do, as I've, I've referred to it a couple times, but if you haven't seen that yet, please check it out. I've said it a couple times, the link is, is in the description because it goes very thoroughly actually showing you what to practice, what exact exercises to practice to change scales while a tune is happening and get the improvisation skills down. So we're not just working on chord by chord by chord or one scale at a time anymore. So. Watch that if you haven't yet, and if you would find that useful. My next video is gonna go over that same type of process, but with chord tones. So we're gonna map out uh, how to improvise through the changes with chord tones so we can add all these things together and start to find our voice. Looking forward to that lesson. I post a new lesson video every week. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.